to function socially and economically. We need to think bigger than just having our fair share of things. <coughs> Only 13 members of 51 in the city council are women, so we're not even at fair share of things. But we no longer can allow men to decide what fair share means. Really, we need to think about what women have traditionally done that has been frankly undervalued and often completely unrecognized by government, by popular culture, and frankly by society. And one example of this inequity that I'm very attuned to this budget season is our human service workers. This workforce, which the city employs uh, about 90,000 of them, 80% are women. And they provide absolutely essential services to over 1.5 million New Yorkers. Everything from childcare, to senior services, to legal services, to homeless care, daycare, 
um, and you'll hear about more. And for a number of historical reasons that are not the fault of any one person, these workers are not compensated anywhere near what their work is worth. That ain't right. And that ain't right. <laughs> organizations even, the agencies that they work for, the senior service centers, homeless shelters, legal aid, all of those places are underfunded and are much less stable uh, than the way that we fund the work that men have traditionally done. And as I've said before, can you imagine a bridge that costs a hundred million dollars the city saying, or any government, saying to the bridge contractor, we're gonna pay you 80 million, not 100. You figure out how to get to the rest. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the construction workers saying, oh, it's okay, don't pay me. We have to keep building this bridge. But that's what women in this workforce do every day, living paycheck to paycheck as they're doing God's work, frankly. The point is not that men's work has been overvalued, but that it's been disproportionately valued. And this is a hard conversation, but it's time we had this conversation. My colleagues and I recognize uh, this in the sense that uh, it has to happen through the budget. But it's crucial that we think about these things in a broader perspective. I want to challenge us to consider how to think bigger in terms of gender e equity. I want to challenge us to have more women in the city council. Okay? And more women who are at the table so they're not being served up. Isn't that the expression? <laughs> you have to be at the table, otherwise you're eaten. You'll be on the table. <laughs> on the table, that's right. Someone else will say it more eloquently. Uh, we need more women involved in, in the decision-making process. From CEOs of major corporations to mom-and-pop retailers, but to the decision-makers on the city council uh, the mayor's office, Nazi is here and Maya is here, has made a point of hiring 50% of his top executives are women. <laughs> you know, that small, simple act, by doing that, you have women in the room who know what it's like to have a day without women. Right. And so you can advocate with him on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that the policies that the city enacts are mindful of the women who keep doing this work day in, day out, caring for those who are most vulnerable and to appreciate that work and make sure that it's funded properly and treated with the respect that it deserves. A day without m women, and maybe you can raise your signs as we say this, a day without women means a day without health care. Yes. It means a day without education. Right. It means a day without child care, without libraries, without elder care, without care for the homeless, without mental health care, without foster care, without sexual violence advocacy, without reproductive care, without activism. And that ain't right. So today we're gonna hear from a number of outstanding women who have been leaders in their field. And of course, we're gonna begin with the city's public advocate. Thank goodness that a woman won that seat because she rocks it. Our public advocate, Tim Day. Uh, my, my, my name is Yadisa, and today is Tuesday, and I'm representing my mom, my sister, and my grandma. Woo! Not yet. That's because women rule. National Day Without Women. Could you imagine what it would be like without 
your mother, without your wife, without your girlfriend, your significant other, without your children. Can you imagine a day without health care, without child care? Could you imagine a day when women just decided we're going to be invisible? Well, today we are here because we are taking over the steps of City Hall to demonstrate the power of women. So I want to thank all of you for coming, and I want to thank the women. We've had a couple of chilling, cold days, but today they brought out the sun. Sunshine. Yes. So I want to recognize all of the women in New York City, in the United States, and around the world who are striking today. We wear red because red represents passion. Red represents sacrifice. Red represents the power of women. And I want to recognize all those women who are unable to join us today to strike from work. Women who are unable to go a day without buying food. Women who are unable to provide who cannot join us because they do not have childcare for their children or medical supplies for their elderly parents. But women who nonetheless are wearing red in their homes, and they're wearing red in their countries and in their villages, and they're joining us, and we are standing for them. That's right. Because we are marking International Women's Day as the day without women, a woman because we have fought long and hard to get where we are today. And we have no, no intentions, Donald Trump, of going back, none. <laughs> and no intentions, Mr. President, of accepting hate as the new normal. That's right. right. <laughs> Love rules. Women have no intentions of giving up our health care and our child care. No intentions of worrying women have no intentions of closing our borders or giving away our worker protection. And women have no intention of allowing a man in Congress to have more power over our bodies than we do. And so we stand here. We stand here for the little girl who still wants to dream because she is not voiceless today. We stand here today for that elderly black woman who's, does, who basically just wants to exercise her franchise, her right to vote. And she's afraid. And today she's not faceless. She stands with us. We stand here today for that undocumented student who is in college and fears being deported. Well, they are not alone today. We stand here today for women who are afraid that they're going to lose their health care because the Congress is going to repeal their health care. Well, we are standing with them today. And we're sta we stand here for the working woman who makes 70 cents to every dollar a male co-worker makes. Yeah. Ridiculous. Right. Ridiculous. But we say she has power today. We stand here today for all women, all across this nation, all on this globe. But we are lucky that we live in this country because at its core, it allows us to demonstrate. It allows me to be loud and proud. The Constitution gives every American the right to assemble peacefully and to protest and to stand up for women's rights and to stand up when your rights are under attack. And for generations of people of different backgrounds, fighting for different causes, fighting for equality, this fundamental right has been the agent of change and progress. And nowhere was that right more apparent than in the civil rights movement. And since before this country has been ever founded, when African Americans were treated like second class citizens, segregated in different schools, forced to drink in separate water fountains, moved to the back of the bus, not allowed to vote, the only way that you can vote was to guess how many jelly beans were in a jar. It was a way, it was a, a dark past. And on February 1st of 1964, college students sat at a, a lunch counter in North Carolina and they asked to be served lunch. And service was refused and they were asked to leave. But rather than leave, they, were, they continued to allow this treatment to persist. These four young men stayed at the counter and refused to leave. And the peaceful sit-in and courage of these young men 
inspired people in Greensboro and all across this nation. And not, no, not only did they succeed in changing the policies of this restaurant, but this sit-in and the power of this and the solidarity of that group, that collective fight, sparked the movement in this nation. Woo! And as I say everywhere I go, it was the power of young people, Councilmember Manchaco, who has joined us. It was the power of young people who has changed everything, every movement in the history of this country. The young people have been in the forefront. And now it's going to be up to young people, and more importantly, it's going to be up to women. Women who marched several weeks ago, who took to the streets. We will not turn back the clock on progress. Women who said these are our bodies and the choice, the reproductive choice is between us and our doctor and no one else. That's right. But women who said you will not turn back, you will not, you will not close and you will not terminate 20 million people who rely upon health care. And women who say we are paid, this, we are paid less for doing the same work as our male counterpart. We marched in the streets. And so we're going to continue to march and we're going to continue to take over the steps from the White House to the State House to City Hall. Woo! 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 And so we must do everything in our power to protect the right to protest, to peacefully assemble. Now more than ever, in the face of an administration which unfortunately does not recognize the Constitution, that does not recognize the law. But all of us, all of us are here to say to the President of these United States that the law applies to you too. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And so, today, these strong women, women of all colors, all races, all denominations, women, we rise up and we resist and we repeat and we do it over and over and over again until victory is won and until we